Oh, holy God, your spirit is present at this Christmas. May your spirit stir our hearts and minds as your words continue to speak to us. Amen. Every year here in Chicago, um, there's the auto show that takes place at the McCormick Center. And for those of you who don't know, this is the largest convention center in the world. And during that show, you know, there are probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of visitors and retailers and vendors that are there. And there's lots of opportunities for getting separated in that maze. And I imagine that there are kiosks that are located throughout the area to help you locate where you're at. And there may be a place even to, you know, find someone if you get separated. And most of us have smartphones or the GPS, and those help families to track each other and where they are. And I mean, it could be a literal maze to get lost and not sure how you're gonna find your way out. But if you're one of those annual sojourners that goes down to the McCormick Center and catches the auto show, I admire your tenacity in wanting to get, become more educated about the various automobiles through questioning and discovery. Now, imagine taking that same complex, uh, similar complex, back, let's say, to the year 10 CE. This is, uh, and you would encounter what's called the Temple Mount, or the Temple of Jerusalem. And the dimensions of the Temple of Jerusalem were staggering. I mean, it's 460 meters by 315 meters by 285 meters by 485 meters long, and some of the walls are as high as 10 stories. And approximately, it's about 1.5 million square feet. And inside this edifice, uh, there are thousands and thousands of people. There are vendors, and there's religious pilgrims visiting for Passover. And there are the smells of food and animals, and probably a little bit of body odor, and the lingering scent of burnt sacrifices, but this is the very setting um, where our story takes place. So I invite you to hear this telling of the story of Luke 41 through 52. Everyone is comfortable with traditions. I mean, every year, Mary and Joseph go to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover, and Jesus is with them, and he's a 12-year-old boy. He's growing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Still a child, though, in the eyes of his parents and the elders in the temple. He has one more year to go before he is considered a man. This year, though, the temple, Jesus notices something, and his eyes and ears pick up on this, and it's going to be different. Unaware, uh, Mary and Joseph, they finish the uh, Passover celebration and start the annual return home. Something is about to be uncovered. This is discovery will complicate things. As his parents depart, Jesus somehow el uh, eludes their parental eye and chooses to stay behind a risk worth taking. Meanwhile, trusting parents have decided that Jesus is amid the rest of the youth in the caravan, and this is an elongated group spread along the road on the journey home. And as they're coming together and the fires for the evening meal is set, where, where is Jesus? And parents, at first, check together those usual groups his son, their son hangs out with, but no Jesus. Then they separate, you know, they're searching the fringes and with those whom they might not know so well, asking them if they've seen a boy named Jesus, giving some general features or descriptions, but they, they shake their heads and say, no, can't say that we have. And there might be even the occasional smirk from someone with a chuckle. <laughs> Perhaps he's not the boy you thought he was. And he's out discovering something new. Anxiety and fear grip their hearts and minds. The thoughts of him being taken, enslaved, injured, or possibly... No, no, they cannot think that. And this is where the amber alert of ancient is activated. <laughs> there is none. Their anxiety is the result of his disobedience. 
Good thing they had their Judean GPS to find their way back in the dark to Jerusalem. Oh, wait, there's, no, there's nothing like that available to them. Instead, they grab some provisions, probably a torch, and they speak the Tefilet Hederek, which is the Jewish traveler's prayer, asking God for safety and guiding their footsteps as they hope to reach their desired location. They head back that night to Jerusalem for life, for gladness, and to find Jesus. There will, there will be consequences for Jesus. Arriving back at Jerusalem, they check where they had lodged. No, no Jesus. Next, they go to the Temple Mount, back through those double shoulder gates where all the pilgrims pass during Passover and pass the cleansing pools. No Jesus. They decide to search together thoroughly, paying attention to every detail. They can't afford to miss a thing. Too many people. Too many youth, and, and too many of them actually with the name Jesus. Day one, no Jesus. Day two, more searching, no Jesus. Day three, their anxiety is maxed out, and they find Jesus in the temple, like a dedicated youth of the Torah. Why didn't they start here at first? This will not be pleasant for Jesus, but he's commanding an audience of people, and it will have to wait. Amazingly, Jesus has constructed his own confirmation class, as it were, delving deep into the Torah. Parents discover a son who they are not expecting, and religious leaders are studious about the questions asked. And right now, they are transfixed because a youth is inquiring and, and postulating questions, and they are not ready to answer or having to contemplate a different frame of mind. Here is Jesus, 12 years old, coming into an awareness of his relationship with God. A pimply-faced, burgeoning adolescent looks at the groups of religious leaders huddled together in front of him, and they are in deep theological and spiritual discussions. They're debating, they're deliberating, and they're synthesizing responses that seem competent, carefully worded, and perhaps definitive such that this inquisitive youth will be satisfied and not respond with another question that will have them huddling together once more. Even his parents marvel while he stuns religious leaders of the Torah. Isn't this the boy that didn't choose to return home with them? Didn't he know they would be worried about his welfare? Jesus needs to be reminded of expectations set out about family and obedience to parents. Mary, the nurturing mother, plays at the guild card. Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with great anxiety. And she's not ready for his abrupt response. Why are you searching for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? A definite hint to his divine frame he is carrying. And he's hoping they truly understand who he is. Their unacknowledging eyes say otherwise. It may take time for all this to think in, sink in. But Jesus is not belligerent. He departs and is obedient and returns home from Jerusalem, honoring his parents, and more importantly, showing profound spiritual and theological awareness. Jesus shows a balance between obedience and discovery. Meanwhile, it is as if the annunciation of the angels once more again stirred in Mary's heart as she treasures what Jesus shares. Is it the timbre of his voice, the words he uses, the way he phrases his questions, that it reawakens in Mary the specialness of this child? She will make sure to note her thoughts in his, in his scrapbook scroll, just in case either of them forgets. Amazingly, she will watch her little boy grow 
as he commands wisdom greater than years and turns to be everyone's favorite. We here at FCC are about to enter a new year. And for many of us, traditions which were always routine have changed slightly, if not entirely, over the last two years. And how, how did we know what to anticipate? The Jesus we encountered in this story is a youth who is sharing and inviting the leaders in the temple to discover a new understanding of their faith. As an older adult, I'm challenged, and I do listen to those younger voices around me, voices bringing a different understanding of traditions and what is, it, what is our engagement of church? For me, they challenge opinions and knowledge I have formed throughout my life. I recognize the age of wisdom, and I also understand the vitality of God's spirit stirring in those who are looking for more than the tradition in the church. This story sheds value per valuable perspectives about how to discern. In our story, Jesus as a youth shows a foretaste of what's to come in his future ministry 20 years into the future. Perhaps for some of us, it will be hearing the voice of a youth. Uh, and for others, it will be encouraging the church to listen to voices of youth, both inside and outside the church. You know, voices like the Malala Yousafzai, who is challenging for women and girls to be educated in Afghanistan, even though with assassination attempts and threats against her life. Or we think of Greta Thunberg, who is challenging and shaming world leaders at the UN for not acting to protect the planet for the future generations of our children's children and great-grandchildren. Instead of following routine traditions that no longer carry a freshness or authenticity, I hear yearnings of youth for a living spiritual connection or community with a relatable God. I believe Jesus was doing the same thing. Perhaps Jesus raises questions for a higher awareness of who he is. And like you, he's not afraid to ask questions of those with religious robes and who have diplomas hanging on the walls. I would, I would encourage each of us this week to spend time in conversation with Jesus and discovering who, who you are. We are an open and affirming congregation, and we seek to provide an extravagant welcome. And God accepts us even when others don't fully understand who we are. You don't have to take it from me. Jesus encourages us our faith discerning even today. I don't know if there will be an auto show next February here at McCormick Center. Maybe you'll have an opportunity to drive by it on Lakeshore Drive in the weeks ahead. But give it a look. And then consider a small youth took some chances to discover more about himself, his faith, and God. And as we approach this new year, take some time with this Jesus discovering. It might help you get through that maze. Amen.